So, welcome back. So, what we thought? So, we thought uh, how your verifications will be done, how it will be defined, uh, what are all the stages of the verification, uh, how you can see your code into any verification. Then we will look at on how to find a box uh, in your design, uh, what are all the important factors for creating an box. So, that is that we will go for to take up the stimulus. So, and then we will verify using an EDUTIS. So, and we are planned uh, the verification in a different aspects. So, one is an a random testing, the second one is an assertion, the third one is an a co verification, the fourth one is an a emulation, formal verification, and an a verification of IPs. So, there we are defined. Uh, the basic purpose uh, uh, of the uh, test bench, where you looked at on um, the whole test bench to be determined uh, through your DUTs for their correctness on the functionalities. So, where you think on to be finded out the aspects of uh, generating a stimulus, applying a stimulus to DUT, capture the responses. So, checks for the correctness, etcetera, etcetera, etcetera. Now, let us and also we seen how your box will be verified. So, the box will be taken care uh, with your design uh, to an a test and a test to an a design. So, uh, it may be an interdependent, may be an intra dependent also. So, externally also it will be present or it will be present in your design code also. The whole design code may also be wasted, so on these aspects also. So, now how to define these uh, uh, test benches, where and all we can utilize this uh, finding of this correctness uh, of, of the um, verification process. So, there we look straight on the constraint random stimulus where uh, that is what we defined in the previous class, how a constraint CRTs will be developed, uh, how the CRTs will be utilized and how the CRTs will be generated using an a RAND and a RAND C keys, um, uh, which will be goes and takes up with an a randomization uh, principles for each stimulus to be uh, generated on those end. The second aspect is to look at on the methodologies. Uh, uh, the methodologies will be depends on uh, what are all the functions you need to uh, generate. So, that is what the second parameter in these basics to be defined for the uh, functional values. So, that itself we are calling it as an a functional coverages. So, maybe uh, a last factor of the utilization, but so it will also be an a, a internal part of your design also. So, that that itself will be defined. So, segregatively how your designs will be goes on to explain the functionalities of your uh, factors. So, to do these functional values, so functional coverages. So, you, you can have different coverage blocks inside your test benches to define your functionalities either independently or dependently. Maybe you call it as an intra functional analysis and inter functional analysis. So, both will be uh, presented over there. So, then we have an a layered test bench. Uh, I think you already studied an a transactors. So, in the previous modules. So, there you defined the uh, uh, interfaces, um, mod ports, all are the transactors what we have. So, these transactors may be presented in a different layers of a test benches because the functional coverage is not only a simple one. So, it is an, a, a, an, an inter uh, functional analysis. So, so that so we need to have an a layered uh, values over there. So, you can have an a, a simple common test bench for all tests what you are defining. So, from the basic functionality checking to an a final uh, end uh, where you are stopping a testing. So, up to 
those points, <coughs> but the variation will be uh, different uh, on this uh, aspects of creating and common test benches. So, may be at single end the stimulus may be a same, so the coverages may be in the same, but creation will be goes on varies. So, with respect to that because of their appearance will be different. Uh, how to take up this common test bench to those appearances using your constrained files, so using your uh, defined constraint uh, files which will be needs to be taken care. Test specific code, so which kept separate from test benches. Uh, each code what we are considering uh, for an a test bench, uh, uh, maybe your initial block, so maybe your clock generation block, so maybe your uh, analysis block, comparative block, etcetera, etcetera. Those are all test specific codes. So they are all they they may be in a separate uh, from test benches also. You can call them. Uh, you can have a CRT. You can call the CRT. So you can have an object class of an a one randomization, uh, one stimulus generated, one coverage analysis. So all those things can be considered at a different uh, <coughs> parameter under an a test bench values. So this is the simplest coverage factors. So as we defined. So, it is an a linear values for a directed testings and we analyzed it also how this direct testings will be goes on uh, varies or goes on takes up. So, then we have an a random test, the random test is the one uh, you are testing randomly a particular portion of the code uh, for its appearance. So, that portion may be covering so only these values. So, the analysis uh, what it is expects is an a very short, the period is an very short uh, uh, from these uh, values. So, but so the analysis in a direct testing is an very large, the period is very large. So, the efficiency, so we can check it out, so at an a directed test is an very high, so in a random test is very low. So, because the coverage which is reaches in a very short period may not be shows us uh, the full functional values. So, but the coverage may be very good, so but the efficiency of that coverage will be very less. So, on those uh, aspects uh, of the testing, so that depends on how uh, you can take up those values also. So, with that, so we will define the uh, functional coverage. So, what functional coverage is doing us? So, functional coverage is simply defining as an a measuring uh, uh, your uh, bugs or your deviations. So, from a designed code to an a, a, a test bench code, the functional values, there is a deviation. So, that deviation we are measuring it. So, for the defined functional values, so that itself we are calling it as an a functional uh, coverages. So, normally the functional coverage is not an a, 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 a single step uh, process, it is an a, a different process where you look at on. So, these functional coverage just to be uh, uh, presented uh, to be taken care. Uh, so, that will be explains us how you can uh, make out your uh, analysis from the stimulus generator to an a response comparisons. So, that is why, so normally, so we look at on these functional coverage as an a two step process. The first you need to add code to the test bench, so that is you are calling so, the whole code RTL code design code to your test bench. So, where you are taking up the stimulus generation. So, once the stimulus is generated, so you are going to uh, monitor the responses or the reactions which is obtained. So, from the design, so, so that you can 
measure the functionality which is defined to us. So, that depends on how uh, it can be taken care uh, to uh, evaluate the those values. So, that depends on so how it can be generated. So, that is why so in the first and foremost analysis you need to create a test bench. That test bench needs to have a generation of an stimulus. So, normally your ATPG is the one example to do that. So, and you are going for to take up its responses, collecting its responses, putting onto an a bins, so are putting onto an a boxes where it is required. So, for a particular functionality, let us say I have an x functionality and I have an y functionality. x functionality responses will be put onto an x bins, y functionality reports will be put onto an a y bins. So, furthermore, so which will be analyzed so in the next step processes. So, how you you need to collect these values? So, by running a different timed simulations or running several timing simulations. So, at an a different set of seed stimulus stimulus values. So, that what you are doing. So, every running, every simulation period, you are inserting a different test seed to an a test bed. So, the test bed is nothing but your design code. So, that will be takes up and gives an response, that response will be collected in a bins. So, that is the normal testing process, that is what we are doing at ANA functionality. So, once you obtained that, so we will go for the next step. In the next step, we will merge the results from these simulations into an a report. So, into an analyzable report. So, where you go on analyzing, so the reference model results to an a, a derived results or, or taken up results. So, so that so the analysis is very uh, properly uh, mentioned or very properly uh, collected, uh, very properly mentioned to those values also. So, here we are not finding out any deviations. So, here we are finding out the most deviations which is uh, there. So, so that so we will uh, make out a major analysis on these uh, factors. So, now we will determine how to once you obtain the deviations. So, we look at on with respect to those deviations, we will create the new stimulus. So, which is tested for different conditions, which is taken up for different logics. So, where you are untouched uh, your design parameters or indirectly we call it as an where and all the untested regions are present um, that will be tested with the different conditions and uh, logics which is presented. So, how to do this analysis? So, repeatedly. So, you need to do it repeatedly. So, how to do this repeatedly and how to analyze this results. So, can we do it manually? So, it is not possible. So, that is why we need to go for an a, a automatic uh, analysis. So, that analysis automatic analysis will be done through an a feedback. So, which is taken from a, a where we are collected all the feedbacks, you are collected all the feedbacks from functional coverage to an a stimulus generations. So, those type of verification so in an a functional coverage will be called as an a coverage driven verification. So, there is a two types of coverages which will be look at on one is coverage driven verification, the second one is the code coverage analysis. The code coverage analysis somebody will say it is an outside the functional coverage, somebody will say it is inside the coverages. So, our area will not be scoped on to this code coverage, our area is to look at on this coverage driven functionality which it needs to be defined for an a different aspects of, uh, of the design values. So, this is the simplest one. So, as you know that uh, the feedback is the very good uh, process of a system. So, uh, from uh, which defines a very good stability uh, to your system also. 
So, here also we think that so with an F feedback we have a very good coverage statics. So, than without an feedback you can see that so without an feedback your coverage analysis takes a larger time to reach this 100 percent values. So, maybe uh, you look at data on more on a directed testing to do this without feedback also. So, if you put on a with feedback, so the coverage will be analyzed within a short period of a time. So, that short period of a time is a very minimum time uh, which needs to be considered to explain so these uh, values so or these uh, parameters. So, what is our major inter interest here? So, for any functional coverage which is uh, definable, so that all these functional coverage needs to go with an a, a, a very high analysis on an feedback, so then very low analysis on an a, a without an feedback also. So, so that so we need to consider the with feedback values than the without uh, feedback uh, values also. So, the, there is a segregation for your application. I am not saying all your design, all coverage analysis needs to go with an a with feedback and some of the designs and some of the aspects may go with an a without uh, feedback uh, uh, also. So, that is indirectly specification to taken up to those values. So, let us see how this coverage will be happens. So, what I am we are looking at? So, coverage is is measuring a tested and untested portions of your designs. Coverage means, so you are going for to measure already tested or already untested portions of a cover the design. A simple example, let us say I have an a semi custom design. So, in the semi custom design, I am using some standard cell libraries. Uh, let us say, so I am designing an uh, FSM, uh, some FSM based design. So, in that FSM day based design, I have a transition, transition uh, used an a maxus and an a flip flops. So, this max and a flip flops um, will be designed through your standard cells in a semi custom. So, what it is done, I borrowed this Max and a flip flop as an a library and standard cell library, which is already tested and a verified uh, for all levels. So, I am utilizing here. So, this is the tested portion. So, what is the untested portion where you are making your whole function to be appeared? What I am doing, I am covering both for this application, both this untested and an a tested value untested and a tested values both. So, it is an iterative process may not be stopped at a single end. Let us say I have an n number of blocks, in n number of blocks I tested the block 1, uh, next I am going for to test the block 2, to test the block 2 block 1 is required. So, it is already a tested portion still I am going for testing that. So, so I am covering to test that. So, said so that the tested portion is a block 1 which is also used and untested portion is an block 2 which is also used to do the uh, verification. So, those type of things will be called as an a coverages. So, now what is the outcome of this coverages? The coverages will be defined as uh, uh, to look at on uh, the higher percentage or increase in the percentage of verification. So, uh, which is an objective that have been met uh, to define um, the coverage um, uh, aspects also. So, the functional coverage is a measure of which the design features have been exercised by a test. So, what is the design features? Design features of your um, is nothing but a characteristics of the design, a logic of the design. Um, a constraints of the design, um, the specification of the design, etcetera, etcetera, etcetera. So, what we are making out? So, through this coverage, what we are defined? So, we are making out to analyze uh, 
these features, these characteristics. So, in a method, that method is called as an a functional coverage. So, which is can be exercised by different test process, um, different uh, vector process, that stimulus process. So, different methodology process what we are looking at. So, all my test, my values or all my fung bug finding will be goes on with this constraint uh, parameter or these uh, values which is which can be uh, taken care. So, now we will use an feedback loop uh, which uh, does this analysis as we have defined here the feedback is a very good process. So, so that so we are looking at so that feedback loops to analyze so the whole measurement uh, which is done for an functional coverage. So, I decide what actions needs to be taken uh, in order to uh, do this 100 percent uh, or to achieve this 100 percent uh, coverage uh, values. So, this is the simplest analysis of the coverages. Uh, so, we have an a minimal, so we have an a directed test cases, we have an a constrained uh, random ca test cases which is taken care with an uh, by adding an a constraints or by considering a constraints. So, we will do the many runs on this constraints using a different uh, seats, test seats. So, this is my test bench uh, or a test bed. So, the test beds will be taken different seats from its uh, test benches which is also an part and parcel of this uh, uh, test bench. So, uh, which runs uh, uh, in a different values, uh, different seats in a different time periods also and produce a results. So, that will be an one variety of functional coverages. So, you have a direct test cases, different functional direct test cases. So, constraint, uh, non-constraint direct test, test cases, etcetera, etcetera, etcetera. All are directed to go with only on an a functional coverage values. So, compare these resulted values directed test and an a constraint random test CRTs and an a directed test. So, with your um, reference model, uh, so under this functional coverage that is what we are defining here. So, I am checking all the features which is defined in my spec, so which needs to be derived on this uh, functional uh, coverage uh, values also. So, that will be makes out uh, to define uh, so the deviations which is occurring on these design features and an a functional uh, coverage values. <coughs> that deviation itself is my bug uh, which is obtained. So, that bug is nothing but you are identifying the holes the identifying the deviations, identifying the bug which is present in this functional coverage or which is deviated from your reference module feature. So, or a spec reference module feature and derives as an a identifiable uh, values. So, which derives uh, and a minimal code uh, modifications. So, uh, through this uh, holes to cover this holes. So, that modification you do it. So, once you do the modification, you are going for uh, directed test cases or wait where it can be applied. So, either you can <laughs> take up the constraint, same constraint or you can modify the constraints so, or you can go with the direct uh, the test cases. So, which is uh, there also or which is to be considered uh, uh, also. So, that is the one thing. So, where we need to look at on um, uh, on these uh, values uh, to be uh, defined or to be taken care to explain this design, uh, design features to this functional coverage values. 
how to describe these uh, coverages. So, there is a two ways to define uh, these uh, coverages as I described. So, in some of the processes, so where we look at on. So, this internal, in external coverage values. So, the same thing, so we are also looking at, so here, so to define those um, uh, values. One will be called as an explicit and another one will be called as an implicit ways uh, to define these coverages, uh, so which is specified uh, also or which needs to be considered uh, differently. So, normally uh, the explicit one will be directly uh, put on to your test environment uh, uh, using your system very log features. So, which may be looks on um, uh, considering your features yet in different conditions. So, different environmental condition values. So, may be applying through an constraints, may be applying through an a stimulus, may be applying through an uh, a feedback model, etcetera, etcetera, etcetera. So, those type of coverages will be called as an explicit coverages. Keep it in mind, explicit coverages are explicit to the features what you are defining it. So, the feature is with respect to the environment. So, what you are creating, what you are created uh, to do or to check. So, those uh, test values. Uh, implicit coverage is the one which is implicitly mentioned to an a particular actions uh, on the uh, design, particular actions of the design. So, maybe, so let us say, uh, have an implicit coverage, uh, so which takes the test when the register moves uh, uh, from directed test to an a, a, a transactions. So, our one transactions will be defined as one registered model. So, to, to, do, to those uh, values. So, these type of implicit values, so will be called as an uh, are covered uh, in the test cases will be called as an implicit uh, coverages. So, you, you, you have an option to take up the explicit and implicit coverages. Usually, so if you have an uh, internal features to be defined uh, or internal features to be covered. So, then you will go with an a, a implicit coverages. So, maybe on a transaction on an <coughs> input buses, uh, transaction on an a address buses, transaction on an a layered uh, uh, stimulus values. So, all are implicit coverages. So, the explicit coverages is with respect to an environment. Let us say I am designing an APB bus. So, the whole environment what I am given for an APB bus to do its transactions or to do its functional values, so will be called as an explicit coverage values. So, so it will be varies from uh, your application to an application. So, the uh, way to apply the explicit coverages and way to apply the implicit coverages. So, both may be used or may not be used. So, both may consider its analysis at an top end, uh, at an higher level end or it may consider at an a lower level end, a lower, end lower level <coughs> end also. Normally, so the implicit coverages um, will be the important factor for us, so than the explicit uh, uh, coverages. So, that is why we look more on the implicit coverages. So, then with an explicit coverage as a as an uh, a designer or as an uh, researcher we looks for that. But for an a uh, final end DUT products, uh, uh, we need to have uh, both equally segregated, both will be defined how you are explicitly taken a values, how you are implicitly uh, taken a values, how, how, you, how you are defining the implicit uh, values to an uh, explicit uh, values also. So, this is the simplest coverage flow, so which will be defined as uh, to take up of the overall uh, uh, definition of an verification. So, that whole uh, 
definition of a verification is defined simply with this uh, flow uh, where uh, you looks for a coverage or you do not looks for an a coverage. So, in both the cases, so we will go and take up this coverage flows. So, let us have a defined your design with an specification. So, we generally call it an a design specs or a RTL design or your designed modules. So, what you need to have? So, the design specification will be segregated at a two ends. One is at an a verification plan, and another one is for an a design. So, keep it in mind. Both are works in a parallel. Both works in an a parallel. So, there may be an interaction between these two: design team to an a verification team, and verification team to an a design team. So, but there is a that uh, what that uh, um, discussion. So that idea exchanges will be limited so with respect to that so but so the majorly so these design people at this end from specs to an a design will have a major responsibility so than the verification plans once the design is ready so then so through this specification by using this design so they will very effectively plan so their verification plans so, what it will be do? So, that verification plan will be generates and a test cases or a test environment or test values, test seats. So, that test seats will be taken to your coverage database. So, by using this DUT, um, until that we called as an, uh, we did not call it as an a DUT for your design. So, now we are calling the design as an a DUT and apply the DUT to this coverage databases that is definable also. So, as you go on looking at so this coverage uh, databases for the design to be defined. So, once you have a seed and once you have a design, so you write your test bench here and apply all the seeds you have by to this design under this uh, test bench criteria. Here you can have uh, uh, an, a, a single test bench which test uh, uh, for all the seed values or you can have a different test uh, environment or test benches for different um, uh, test seed also depending on your applications you should have to be varies. So, once you done that, so you will collect the responses, compare the responses in the coverage database through your uh, reference model for this DOT, for this DOT. So, and check out what constraints you put on to this and what test cases you generated it by taking an application of that. So, once the comparison is gives out an a result. So, that result may be an a pass or may be an a fail. So, if it is pass, then we will do an a coverage analysis, the whole coverage analysis. So, and with respect to the box which is generated, we will regenerate these test cases or test seats to us. So, if it is failed, so then we will go and debug the design. So, we will correct the design. So, where and all the design correction is required. So, with respect to the design correction, so we will uh, uh, push the design uh, again for an verification process. So, this is an iteration process, that iteration process goes on varies. So, in a different um, uh, aspects and until unless it limits to us, uh, uh, it will be goes on varies with respect to those values also. So, so that, so your design uh, may not be limited, uh, your coverage database may not be limited to an one end. So, it is goes on uh, doing until unless your uh, design will be comes out. So, what it will be expenses? So, it is again depends on the simulation and the vendor. So, because they have their own format of storing a coverage data. So, they somebody will have an XLX format, somebody will have an APY format, somebody will have an uh, 
dot doc format depending on their analysis tools. So, dot v format. So, so many formats we have to dot db format, database format. So, many formats we have to store this coverage statics um, in their analysis tool. So, it goes on varies uh, how your database will be created, uh, how your database will be uses your design and a test cases. Now, we in this era we as AML is progressing uh, to different applications. So, the major end uh, of applications which will be looks at on uh, is with respect to um, creating a hardware for the TAL, AML applications. We have a different techniques called as an edge computing, mem computing to do all these uh, parameters. So, what do we need to look at on? So, we need to look at on how to create this database for the applications. So already it is a huge, it contains a huge database. So, again we need to create a coverage database for those things. So, there, so we have so many database uh, which is created for these type of applications. So, the one type of variety is your Pi MTL, um, Pi HDL. Uh, my m my hdl etc etc so many uh, parameters which will be looks at on on this coverage database also so one needs to perform the following actions with the, these tools so the same things we are explaining again so one is run a test with the multiple sheets that's what i told run a test with multiple sheets so which is generated from your spec um, so, you need to have a multiple seeds which is compared and derived also. Every point of a time, one set of seed is taken and one set of seed is put on to these values to generate the whole coverage uh, statics to uh, those values. Check for pass or uh, If it is pass, so then you take up. Uh, to an a coverage analysis gen to generate the next set of um, um, test seats. So, if it is failed, so then you need to go back and correct the design and put it on to uh, the same test vectors uh, what is processed previously, same test seat on a under a coverage database and again checks for <coughs> pass or an fail. The functional coverage, so will the information is only cease to validate uh, uh, your successful uh, execution, successful simulation execution of your uh, designs. So, which, which again may be dependent on uh, different aspects of the designs, so different values of the designs, so uh, which may be considered for those values. Analyze coverage across multiple runs, so maybe one end, uh, one values to the another values or maybe a different values to the uh, different uh, analysis, it goes on uh, varies uh, under this uh, coverage uh, under this uh, analysis. So, which may be uh, runs in a different um, aspects uh, uh, of the multiple uh, values. So, that is about the some basics on the coverage flows. So, may not be looks at on, I think I am given more detail uh, on um, the coverage uh, statics. Uh, so, the coverage flow, coverage methodology, etcetera, 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 the fun whole functional coverage uh, values. So, it, uh, which will be looks at on how it can be taken up also. So, what are all the theoretical analysis we are doing? The same thing will be written as an a, a programming aspects through an a system array log, through an a system array log whoops concept under this functional coverage analysis. So, and we will look at on how well you can use the monitor command, how well you can use uh, um, the storing uh, uh, command. So, how well you can take up these values to into any different aspects of the uh, designs uh, to us. So, coverage types, so code coverage which measures the design uh, implementations. So, in a different uh, aspects uh, of the values. So, what it will be looks at on? So, it is majorly looks at on on your um, design codes uh, where 
will be uh, taken up and how it will be uh, designed also. So, uh, there is a different parameters needs to be checked on in code coverage. So, if it is with respect to an, a, a number of lines uh, which goes for an execution, so, so that we will look at on the line coverage, how many lines of the code have been executed. So, simplest thing is, uh, so I am written and uh, uh, something like this. So, always uh, at uh, all, uh, always at uh, pause edge of clock, uh, some begin, some y is equal to x, uh, x is equal to z, z is equal to y, right. Three statements I have. So, now what I will do, so in a line coverage, so I will like it, I will check it out for an a period of a clock, so at positive edge of the clock, at positive, at positive edge of the clock, is it statement 1 is executed or statement 1, 2 is executed or statement 3 is executed. As it is a sequential code for every positive edge, either I will execute the any one of the statement which is presented. So, now what is our major aim? Is it all the three lines of the code statements? So, lines of the code is covered in a different positive edge of the uh, signal. So, that itself will be explains us. So, the lines of the code, so which needs to be uh, considered. Similarly, we have an, a path through the code and expressions have been executed. So, may be called as an a path coverage. So, uh, uh, let us say, so in this example, I have an uh, y is equal to x. Uh, so, this y is equal to x. So, now what I will do? So, how the data which is moves from x to an a y? So, the path which is carried the x values to an a y and the z values to an a x and then y values to an a z. So, I am just interchanging the values over there. So, now I will check out how many paths it will be taken care. So, in this path coverage, I have a different paths to be defined. So, maybe uh, looking at my paths as an a, a, a critical path, uh, a critical path or non-critical path. So, in a critical path, my execution will have an major um, uh, drawback or major um, uh, delay analysis or major criticality which is found while going for an execution on that expression. So, uh, may be taking a more resources, may be taking a more time to execute. So, all those may be considering a more, more switching time, switching events on those things. So, all those things will be uh, considered. In a non-critical, it is just an expression. These are the three expressions what we are thought of it. So, all these three expression is goes for an execution at a different uh, value based analysis. So, of that time. So, uh, and next one is a toggle coverage. So, it is also called as an event coverage. So, whenever a, a variable which is defined uh, with a different uh, values. Uh, with a different data type, not a values, different data types. So, which goes to change its value or it goes to toggle its value from 0 to 1 or a 1 to 0. So, how many times it is toggled its values? So, how many times it goes from 0 to 1, how many times it goes from 1 to 0 will defined as an a single bit uh, uh, variable. So, that itself uh, will be called as an a toggle uh, conditions. Why we want this toggle coverage? So, the line coverage will be explains us how many times I need to go for an execution. There may be an irredundant codes lines that can be uh, eliminated. So, in path coverage, I will check out the criticality. Uh, in the toggle coverage, I will check out so, the event occurrences, so which may be derivative for a delay, 
which may be derivative for an power dissipation. So, that is why, so the toggle coverage is also an important uh, which needs to be defined uh, for that. So, then we have an a, 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 a FSM coverage. So, where you think on the states on the transitions uh, in a state machine uh, which has been uh, visited. So, the states, how many states you need to have and what are all the states you are visited. Let us say, so I have simply as like this, I have a uh, some a state machine S naught, S 1 and S 2. So, I am making a transition from S naught to S 1, S 1 2 and uh, uh, S 2 uh, and S 2 to an uh, uh, S naught. So, and again I have a cover one state which makes a transition from S 1 to an S, S naught depending on your um, input values. So, what we will think on? So, we will think on uh, uh, how, what are all the states you will touch? So, first of all, so number of states you are covering it. So, S naught to S 1 you are going, but you are not touching anywhere else S 2. So, then the S 2 is an irredundant state, you can eliminate it. So, similarly, if I am covering all the states S naught to S 1, S 2, but so nowhere else I covered the logical input values of those states. Let us say in S naught I have a two transition uh, with one input values that is an 0 and an 1. So, if I am attempted only for a 0 input values, so then so uh, there is no meaning to have an the event on uh, that variable as an 1, right. So, that is one transition I am not checking. So, that transition is always wasted. So, so that so I, I, I can have so that transition to be eliminated. So, a tra transition to be minimally considered in my design process. So, like this, so I am going on analyzing so different coverages. So, these are the four important coverage statics I am taken. So, other than this we have an uh, conditional coverages, we have an uh, uh, loop coverages. So, we have an uh, uh, event coverages. So, it is toggle coverage is only with respect to an a signal uh, or an a variable. So, but an event coverage is with respect to your event variables, maybe an a clock, maybe an a reset, etcetera, 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 which checks for your synchronicity and a non synchronicity values. So, we have different tools which is instrumented to do this analysis uh, and gather all the statics uh, of these codes automatically. Uh, so, we have very effective tools also so to do this coverage analysis. So, you can uh, do the coverage uh, 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 types and the coverage statics uh, and you can make out that analysis to be appeared so on my uh, designs also. So, the end result is to measure what all I am given. So, all are all the end results of that. So, which will be measures of how much your test exercises the design code. So, it, it is an important factor of your SOC verification. So, to do the code coverage, so before attempting to do your um, uh, whole uh, implicit or explicit uh, uh, functional verification. So, otherwise, so what will happen so once you change this irredundant code, you may change your uh, functionality, it may changes your functionality also. So, that is why, so once uh, you are attempting to take up the code coverage, you do all very, all sort of code coverages what it requires for your design. Once you done a code coverage and you derive the end results, so once you done a end results, so then you can go for um, all uh, functional uh, coverages that explicit and implicit functional coverages uh, just to be uh, done or to be happen. So, the code coverage measures how thoroughly you are test exercised the implementation. So, majorly at the implementation end because which is the derivative to from that code itself we are deriving uh, the, the different um, um, 
the aspects of uh, your uh, reconsideration of the designs. So that is why, so the code coverage uh, itself will be measures uh, your implementation criteria. So of your specs, design specs, uh, design spec values. So not on the verification, it is not on the verification plan. So that is why somebody will say, so this has an uh, uh, not present. So in this uh, verification plan only presented uh, in this uh, design uh, factors. So that is why so co code coverage will, somebody will say code coverage is not a part of an uh, uh, um, uh, functional coverage. It is an impartial part of an uh, uh, code cover, uh, functional coverage uh, values. <coughs> so this is the one simple example uh, of D flip flop. So you can check out the errors what we have. So I am just written a very uh, system very log code for this. So module D flip flop output logic. So I am using a logic data type. So Q and a Q underscore L. L. So input I am using a logic data type of clock D and reset L. So I am using an asynchronous reset design. So I will check both the things positive edge of the clock or a negative edge of the reset L. So we will begin. So Q is equal to D and a Q bar L is equal to not of D. So is it a correct model? So no, it is not a correct model. So we need to check the D value. So with respect to the D value and with respect to the designed model, so the, uh, the assignment will be goes on very. So let us say I am going on checking the line coverage, coverage. So then I will check for these two line how it is executed. So now in a path coverage, I will check out how the D moves to an Q or to an a Q underscore L. So the toggling will be checking for all the three variables. So one is Q underscore L and another one is an Q and the third one is an a D value. So there is no FSM is there here. So that is why I will not discuss on the FSM coverage of this. This is a, this as for the verification, uh, this we call it as an incomplete plan, uh, incomplete D flip flop model. Uh, so because it is not particularly covered what logic you need to check it. So Q is equal to D when and Q bar Q underscore L is equal to not of D is when because D is the common factor in both the uh, <coughs> statements either to, uh, in both the statements so that so it should be segregatively explained. So how Q is equal to D should be considered and Q underscore L uh, which is not equal to D should be considered. So functional coverage, okay. So I will stop here. This session.